It's Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. First off, I want to start the show out with this. I want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in uh, while we were in Texas. It's good to be home, but I already miss Texas. What a great place. Not perfect, but I'm going to tell you, it's a lot better than California. But I want to thank everybody for all the great comments. If you haven't seen the Texas videos, please go back and watch all those videos. And also make sure you come over to my Patreon channel where we were able to do some training and talk about some things that needed to be talked about. But um, uh, Texas was just an incredible time. Uh, I want to thank Aaron uh, for having us out. And uh, again, uh, if you haven't seen those videos, please go back and watch them. But today, without further ado, I want to get th this show started today back in California. I want to talk about a few things. Uh, took down some notes. We have got a lot of threats out there, ladies and gentlemen, big trouble, bank failures, bank failures. Are they coming to America? Well, yesterday, Lloyds Bank, Halifax and Bank of Scotland, the customers, their customers were unable to access their accounts for hours. Uh, after their online banking uh, services went down, customers were absolutely furious. Thousands reported major technical issues. And I want you to think about this for a second. What if this happened to you? It's happened here already. It may have already happened to you. Um, but when I read this, this only lasted for about four and a half hours, but people needed to make payments. Uh, they, were, they were unable, uh, many of them, unable to make essential payments, put them in a bad position. Uh, again, it only lasted four and a half hours from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. What if it lasted longer? What if it lasted a few days? What if it had lasted a few weeks? You, you know, it, it, it's been countless times now where I've gone to an ATM and it doesn't work. I go to another ATM, it's shut down. I, I try to get to a bank, it's closed. And, and so I don't know about all of you, uh, but it just seems a little odd, doesn't it, with what's happening uh, to the banking sector? Now, we're being told that uh, they pa all the banks passed the stress test. They've never been better. Things are great. But why are so many banks closing down? How come the ATMs are always out of service? And how come we're seeing so many of these so-called glitches, maybe cyber attacks, whatever they may be? Uh, but what if this happens here and it happens for more than a half a day? What if it lasts a week, two weeks, and you go to your bank and the doors are closed? You go to the bank, the ATMs don't work. Is it possible? It's very possible. And this is why it's, why it's so imperative that you are thinking outside of the box, that you are being more and more self-sufficient, that you're getting yourself detached from the system. So again, it could be a glitch, but what happens when that glitch lasts a lot longer than a few hours. And as I was reading this article, I, I watched a interview with Gerald Salente. Uh, he was on Stansbury Research today. And he says he's completely out of the banking system. And I'm pretty much completely out of the banking system. I leave enough money in the bank to pay the essential bills. I know most of you are, are doing the same thing, but uh, you know, you are talking about the biggest criminals in the world. Why are we doing business with them? Uh, just to paraphrase a little bit uh, in this interview, I just wrote down some notes from the uh, interview. Why leave your money in a bank where you earn absolutely nothing while they lend your money out and earn interest and pay you nothing? And heaven forbid you bounce a check. The overdraft is, is crazy. Uh, and most people are earning negative interest on their money in a checking account or a savings account today as it is. Uh, so why, why are we keeping so much money in the bank? Why are, why are we dealing with these banks? Be your own central bank, you know, get a good safe. Or, or if you have another location uh, where, where you can kind of, um, you, you know, uh, separate some of your assets in other locations, uh, you know, like if you have a bug out, like a place in Texas, if you have another location, uh, maybe you can put a safe there, maybe you can keep some cash there, maybe you can keep some gold and silver there. Don't keep your all, all your eggs in one basket, that's for sure. But we all need to know what we're doing with our money and where it is. And when things get extremely bad, can we get to it? 
Is it safe? Where is it? We need to be accountable, ladies and gentlemen, for what we're doing and where we're putting our money right now. This game is rigged and you're, you are gonna be a loser here if you're not awake. 25% interest on your credit card while they are cutting people's uh, credit limits uh, on, on their credit cards now. Think about that. Uh, I, I, I just uh, read something the other day where a woman had a $10,000 credit line on her credit card and she just got a letter saying it was cut to $2,500 with, uh, uh, with a FICA above 700. So uh, you put money in the bank, they pay you nothing. Uh, they sure like to charge you uh, when you bounce a check uh, uh, with, with overdraft, and they sure like to charge you 18, 19, 22, 25% interest uh, on that credit card. So why are we dealing with these institutions? I don't know. Uh, I wanna go a little further. Let's talk about the Fed. The Fed is so afraid now of what's happening. They're afraid to raise rates, but I think at some point, many people now talking about the chances of interest rates going up, it's not gonna happen this year. Could it begin to happen next year? Yes, it could. And this is when things uh, in the housing market uh, could really start crumbling. Although we'll talk a little bit more about the housing market. Uh, I wanna talk about that. But you know, they're forcing so many people into the stock market uh, because people aren't earning any interest uh, in the bank. So they're, they're forced to gamble. There's no more investment anymore, ladies and gentlemen. It is gambling. But uh, the Fed is so afraid they, they cannot move, right? I, I mean, we're, we're literally at zero right now. And if we moved 50 basis points, this whole thing would begin to crash. But I think at some point, it's very likely that they're going to have no choice but to begin to raise interest rates. And uh, that is when the gambling is going to stop. People are going to be running to the exits, and it is going to be a full-blown disaster, a crash. We're going to see more supply, supply chain disruptions taking place, more uncertainty. And if you're watching what I'm watching, uh, we are in the land of uncertainty right now. And as things become more uncertain, as the supply chains break down, as the U.S. dollar is being decimated, um, look, there's never been a better time to be owning some of this stuff. Uh, silver, gold, you need to be holding real assets, ladies and gentlemen. This is not financial advice. This is me telling you what I'm doing, what my friends are doing, and what a lot of very wealthy people are doing, and what your central banks are doing. Again, be your own central bank. You need to be stockpiling as much as this as you can while you can get it. Bitcoin, uh, also in the news, I want to briefly talk about that. Bitcoin has been just getting wrecked, um, and it's going to continue as more governments crack down uh, on Bitcoin, now uh, down below $30,000. And I want to talk a little bit more today uh, about Bitcoin. And I just want to talk a, more, a little bit more uh, about what's happening in this economy. You know, people are beginning to realize that they're in a dead end. You, you, you know, there's a lot of people that are reluctant to go back to work because, you know, uh, if you're in Texas, $7.25 an hour minimum wage. Yes, some places are paying more. Uh, but we, we have millions of people now who are beginning to realize that they're at a dead end. You know, if you're working at a Taco Bell, that's your career, or Kohl's, or Home Depot, or Burger King, um, where do you go from there? You know, there's, there's, we are watching opportunity in America be vaporized. Uh, you, you know, people working at all these big, giant, corporate big boxes, and, you know, literally just treated like slaves. And we are witnessing such a large amount of people now coming over to America from all over the world. These people are gonna work a lot cheaper than most Americans will work. They will live you know, 10, 12, 15 people in a house. They will live on the bare minimum. They will work for the bare minimum. And Americans uh, are unaware of the shock the shock in their standard of living that is about to happen. You have AI and, and technology. You have people from all over the world coming here now, all going after these jobs. I, I don't know what this is gonna look like five years from now, 10 years from now, but uh, 
it's going to look a lot different. And I hope that you're preparing, be your own asset, make sure you're accumulating hard assets like this and be awake because things are about to really change here. And LA Times, another month, another record. Southern California home prices hit all time high. So isn't that wonderful news? While we have 25% unemployment in America, um, while people are literally the middle class being decimated, and while we're watching uh, opportunity and wealth um, in the middle class, in the lower middle class being absolutely decimated. Southern California real estate market hit another historic peak in June with home prices soaring to yet another all-time high. Though analysts see the extreme bidding wars of the last year beginning to ease. You, you know, they, they try to make this sound like it's such incredible news, but all it's doing is pricing out the middle class. It's pricing out the first time home buyer. Uh, it's making it harder for people who, who may be poor to break in to that lower middle class to be able to afford a house. Um, and what we're seeing here is this bubble inflating so far beyond anything humanly possible. And people think that this is great. The part, you know, I see, I continue to see these real estate agents on social media bragging about these prices and, and how fast the house sold and how much, you know, they got for it. And they don't tell you how much of this is institutional money. And they don't, these people, they, they don't understand. I hope if you're a real estate agent that you're putting money away because when this thing blows up and it will blow up, you're gonna see a major uh, housing crash unlike we've ever seen before. Uh, you're gonna have to live off the money you've made off the last five years. So if you made a half a million dollars this year, uh, you're going to have to use that half million dollars for the next five years or, or, or when this thing begins to crumble. But I do not see this thing lasting more than a year. It is cooling down right now. CNBC, builders pull back as home buyers are priced out of market. Building permits fell more than expected, lowest since last August. Mortgage ap uh, applications to purchase a newly built home dropped nearly 24% year over year. This is huge. The median price of a newly built home in May was up 18% compared uh, with May of 2020. And the uh, uh, average loan uh, amount hit a record $392,000. Uh, how long? Can this last, ladies and gentlemen? You know, the average medium income, last I checked, was $34,000, and uh, the average new home is almost $400,000. This doesn't compute. Mathematically, this doesn't make any sense. Um, this thing needs to crash. We need to come back to reality. And again, if you're in the building business, if you're in the real estate business, I hope you're saving your money. I'm, I'm so sick of these people. You, you know, uh, oh, I just sold a house. Here's my new pool. Here's my new Mercedes I'm leasing. You better be very, very cautious if you're in this business, okay? Because when it crashes, it crashes real fast and it doesn't come back for a very, very long time. And this one is gonna be much different than 08. Remember when things crashed in 08, those homes didn't start getting back when they were um, uh, taken by the banks, when, they, when these people defaulted and the bank foreclosed on these properties uh, and they were on the bank books as REOs, those properties didn't come back on until around 2010 or 11. That's when we started seeing the REOs. So it was two or three years uh, until we started seeing the banks uh, getting these homes off the books. And then it took a couple more years after that before things started kind of getting somewhat normal again. So yeah, it's gonna be a good five years. This one could be much longer. The Hedge, National Bureau of Economic Research tells 14 million jobless Americans that the recession officially ended in April, 2020. Uh, this was the shortest recession ever. What a relief, isn't that, ladies and gentlemen? It's all, it, the recession has already ended. It ended last year, okay? There's no recession in 2021, nothing to worry about. 
But ask yourself this, if the recession ended 15 months ago, why is Jerome Powell and the Fed still buying $120 billion in treasury and mortgage-backed securities every month? That's a good question, right? Why do we need another $3.5 trillion uh, of stimulus, such as this human uh, infrastructure bill? Why can't we raise interest rates? How come the Fed balance sheet is $8.4 trillion? How come the national debt is $28.4 trillion? How come we have 25% unemployment in America? Just a few questions, just a few questions. Wolfstreet.com. And remember, do your own due diligence, do your homework, don't believe me. Look for yourself. Normal, astute American car buyers just pay whatever. AutoNation, largest auto dealer in the US. Uh, that's the title of the article. And, and, and just like the housing market, how long does all this nonsense go on? Retail prices of vehicles. Let's take a quick look at this. New prices, uh, 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 new, new auto prices. Uh, second quarter 2021, the average price was $44,479,000. Uh, when we look at the second quarter of 2019, uh, new autos were running on average $39,000. $276 in two years. That's a 13% increase. I hope that your paycheck went up 13%. I hope your net worth went up 13%. Used car prices in the second quarter of 2021, on average now, $25,882. You look at 2019, second quarter average. Uh, used car price was $20,969. When we look at the profit that, that the uh, automakers are making right now, new car profit in the second quarter of 2021, they're making on average $4,153. The second quarter of 2019, they were making $1,780. In two years, they're making 133% more on the same car. Uh, Used cars, uh, the profit on average this year, $2,239. The average profit in 2019, second quarter, $1,452. In two years, that's a 54% increase in profit. And, oh, and by the way, financing, uh, they're making uh, an additional 22%, additional on top of what they were making uh, in 2019, an increase of 22% in financing. So people are, are really uh, getting stuck. Uh, the, the automakers are sticking it to you. Uh, the, how, the home builders sticking it to you. Um, so profits, they're, they're making it hand over fist, but sooner or later, uh, people are going to get priced out of autos just like they're getting priced out of homes and there's going to be a pullback and when there is we're going to see prices coming down but as we continue to watch people lose jobs as we see wages getting cut as we see this inflation taking place and as we're going to about to see millions of people evicted uh, from uh, this uh, uh, rent moratorium and the forbearance uh, um, moratorium when all this expires People's credit is going to be destroyed. We are going to see a lot less people uh, that are going to be uh, able uh, to buy a home because either they're broke, they don't have a job, uh, they don't have a job history, uh, their, their credit's been destroyed because they haven't made a rent payment in 14 months, you name it. So big trouble is coming. Continue to prepare. Politico, China is buying American farms and Washington wants to crack down. I wonder why all of a sudden now Washington wants to crack down. Where have they been the last 10 years? China is spending US dollars, this monopoly money, and they're buying up farms, which allows them to have control of our food supply. China controls 192,000 acres in the US worth $1.9 billion. Uh, this is land for farming, it's ranching, and it's forestry. You also have Canada and Europe, which owns millions of acres in the U.S. And I just, I don't, I, I can never understand this, that we allow foreign governments uh, and foreign investors to come in and buy land in America. Ranches, farms, forestry. I think that should be illegal. I should think it should have never been allowed. I think that American land is for Americans only. 
Um, but it's something to be aware of. And, and, you know, I love Texas to death, but Texas is one of the states where China owns, I think, more land in Texas than any other state in the country. Another uh, uh, thing I want to talk about here, going back to, to the beginning of the video, Bitcoin. This is on CNBC. Viral video shows Malaysian police destroying 1,069 Bitcoin mining rigs with a steam roller. CNBC, another article, nearly $100 billion wiped off crypto market as Bitcoin drops below $30,000. This is last night, $100 billion just wiped out overnight in crypto markets. Um, so now I, I think last I checked, Bitcoin's around $29,700. And we're gonna continue to see more crackdowns on cryptos, uh, on Bitcoin. And uh, look, as I've said in the past, I don't care if you buy cryptos, I have nothing against it. I, I think it started out as a fantastic idea, but look, we all have to be realistic here. These central banks are not gonna allow competition. Uh, they're, they're not gonna give up control, okay? And uh, that's why I'm gonna continue to buy this stuff. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Between the cyber attacks, the ransomware, uh, all, all the uh, crypto fraud and all, all this manipulation, I'm going to hold things that I can get to. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Put it somewhere safe, and I don't think you're ever going to regret it. This can never uh, just be um, stolen off of, off of a computer off of a, you know, with a click of a, of a button. Yeah, sure, somebody could rob you. There's no doubt about it. Don't keep all your eggs in one basket. Put it in different places. Um, and again, security. Got to have security because, look, they can steal your food. They can steal your water. They can hurt your family if you don't have security. Security is without a doubt the number one asset. And anyone out there making videos similar to this one, telling you about how bad it's about to get, talking about an economic collapse, telling you to buy gold, telling you to buy silver, telling you to put food and water away, if they're not telling you to have security, if they're not putting their money where their mouth is, if they're not out there training, if they're not out there walking the walk, then they're full of baloney, okay? Anybody telling you to buy this stuff, anybody warning you about what's coming, and these people do not have security themselves, they're full of baloney. They're not walking the walk. I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, I, I believe 100% in security, in training, being able to be self-reliant, self-sufficient. You can try to call the police, they're not gonna be there, okay? Don't rely on that, especially when things get bad and the lights go out. You are on your own. So anybody uh, trying to, to uh, you know, sell you something, uh, tell you how, how bad it's gonna get, uh, tell you what you need to do. If these same people aren't out training, if they're not out walking the walk and they don't have security, turn the channel, don't listen to them. Because if you have this, if you have food, if you have water, if you have family members and you don't have security, then you're either a hypocrite uh, or you're just a phony, okay? Or you're just dumb. Walk the walk and listen to people who walk the walk. I'm gonna leave it there today. And again, I wanna thank everybody for watching the Texas videos. If you haven't seen them, please go check them out and please come over to Patreon. I'm gonna be dropping more videos from Texas uh, over on Patreon, so check it out. I wanna thank everybody for all the prayers, all the support. God bless every one of you. I look forward to talking to all of you very, very soon. Have a great day and make sure you stay on track, walk close to God and continue preparing. Things are about to get very, very bumpy.